Hey viewers, I've had some people ask me about rear derailleurs, especially like the cage length, that they wanted to make changes to their drivetrain, either changing the crank set or the uh, rear cassette freewheel, and not sure whether they were gonna need a uh, long cage derailleur or could stay with a short cage derailleur. Anyway, I'm gonna explain the difference between the two and how to figure out what you need. Now the job of the cage is to keep the chain tight, to remove slack out of the chain as you change gears. And so one thing you need to do is figure out how, what the potential slack that uh, you're gonna have for your drivetrain, and I'll show you how to figure that out. First, you wanna look at your crank set. Uh, determine the uh, size uh, in the number of teeth on the largest sprocket and the number of teeth on the smaller sprocket. In this case, there's 53 teeth on the largest sprocket and 42 teeth on the smallest sprocket and so that's a difference of 11 teeth. Next, you wanna look at your freewheel or cassette. Determine uh, how many teeth are on the largest cog and how many teeth are on the smallest cog. In this case, there are 23 teeth on the largest cog and 13 teeth on the smallest cog, so that's a difference of 10 teeth. Now what I can do is add those two numbers together. So the 11 teeth difference from the front and the 10 teeth difference from the back. So 11 plus 10 is 21. So the potential slack in this chain is 21 teeth. So I need a rear derailleur that has a chain wrap capacity of 21 or greater. In this case, this derailleur has a chain wrap uh, capacity of 26. So more than enough to handle that slack uh, in that chain. Now I use the term chain wrap capacity. You might also find that listed as total capacity, capacity, uh, anything like that. Um, you'll find that on the specification sheets for the particular derailleurs. Here's spec sheet for a Shimano 5700 uh, derailleur and there's actually uh, two different versions of this, a short cage and a medium cage version and on here they list the uh, short cage version as being uh, 34 teeth or less and for the medium cage they list as being 39 teeth or less. Uh, a long cage is generally going to have a greater capacity uh, than a short cage You'll generally find like long cage derailleurs on a on mountain bikes. We have like wider uh, gearing ranges, and then you on uh, short cages on road bikes, which have narrower gearing ranges. Now, by comparison, here's one of my mountain bikes, and it's got a wider drivetrain. And so on the crank set here, the large sprocket is 44 teeth, and the small sprocket is 24 teeth. So there is a difference of 20 teeth right there. Now, on the cassette here, the small cog is 11 teeth, and the big cog is 32 teeth. So that's a difference of 21. So 20 plus 21 is 41. So there's a potential uh, slack in the chain of uh, 41 teeth. And so the, the uh, derailleur on here is a long cage derailleur and it has capacity of 43. And so it can handle this drivetrain. Now, when choosing a derailleur, uh, it's okay to have greater capacity than what you need. So you could install a long cage derailleur on a road bike. Um, that would, shouldn't have any problems other than you're gonna have a bigger, bulkier, heavier derailleur than what you need. Uh, but it should work fine. Uh, but if you you don't want to install a derailleur with less capacity than what you need, uh, that can cause problems. Uh, right now, this derailleur here is within capacity. I have it shifted to the big uh, chain ring and the big cog here, and you see the, how stretched out this uh, derailleur cage is, but you still have a nice uh, bend of the chain going through the pulleys there. But if I were to use a few more links, I'll just bridge this here with a piece of uh, coat hanger here, take some links out like that. Now you're getting a much straighter line going through there. And if I were to try to, try to use this derailleur on a bike that had like a triple uh, chain ring and bigger cogs here, um, it would actually run out of space here. The chain would like lock up. And so that would be very bad. So you want to at least have the derailleur um, meet the, the capacity requirements of your drivetrain. Now another thing that people have asked me about is they want to change out the freewheeler cassette to put one on there with a wider range, one with a, a uh, bigger large cog on there. Do they need a long cage derailleur for that? Well, uh, the length of the cage does not directly uh, relate to the limit of the, the size of the, the big cog on there. There's another specification that comes with derailleurs called largest cog. That will tell you the largest cog that you can put on there that that derailleur was designed for. In this case, there's a 32 tooth uh, large cog on here 
and the derailleur is specced to a largest cog of 36 teeth, I believe. You do still need to take into account, if you're changing the, uh, the, the uh, rear uh, cassette to put one with a wider range, how is it going to affect the total numbers and is that going to push it beyond the capacity of the derailleur? So those are the things you need to kind of take into account for that. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up on my video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button and you'll see new videos that come out. I'm on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a lot of stuff over there as well. And I have a website, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, um, subscribe up to that uh, that's a website, and I post a lot of stuff over there. All my videos are categorized. I have forums where you can ask questions. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.